I've got a lot of dirt. You got a lot you of dirt? You guys know Edwin? Photos by Jurassic? No. Wait, Wait no, I do. That sounds familiar. No, no, no. That yeah, sounds yeah. familiar to me. Yeah. I'm out of the, I'm kind of out of it. He, he knows everything. I just get the scoop from him. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I can so, only like, imagine. Everyone, everyone's fucking each other? Pretty much. Everyone's no. super horny. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, also, just so you know, because it's your first time, we're already are recording. Yeah, we are this recording. is kind of yeah. how we start our podcast. Yeah. There's no real formal. <laughs> um, I remember. Everyone's fucking across it. <laughs> everyone's fucking everyone. People talk the title about. Of this one. People talk about during the Olympics. Oh, yeah. And they say that's like, I can't, I, I want to say maybe I talked to like Fraser about it because he obviously was on the Olympic weightlifting team. But like when they go and they're all in the Olympic training center, they're just, they're just, they're fucking huge or- in the ev- training center. Not, I mean, they're, like they, they're, just they're getting living their- there. They're like in the training center. See, I, like, thought, I thought like, like when you're going to perform, like you got to keep it all like bundled up. Like you want that like pressure, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a Maybe thing. they're all fucking I mean, right when they finish. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Oh, to the finish line. That's what I was gonna say. Like, been holding sure. back or pressure too long. Way across the finish line. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Like a jacket. Really trying to go out with a bang. After. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey guys, God. welcome to Between the Refs with Brooke and Gina. Yeah. We you are introduce we, our yeah, well, amazing been, guest. Obviously, because all of you guys listen I'm to this every, every week, and we told you we were having a guest on. We have Aaron Hind. He is the co-founder and president of Life Aid. You got my name right. No one ever gets my name right. I want you to we know I have been stressing yeah, about we've been, it. We said it both ways last time. We said it. I'm we go pretty both sure ways. it's either Aaron Hind or Hind. Yeah, we, we, we oh, go Hind, both ways. Oh, I haven't heard that one. Hindi is usually. Oh, really? Say. Hindi? Yeah. No. I guess I'm Indian. Well, that kind of makes sense. I'm Puerto uh, Rican, just for the record. Oh, okay. All With right. pronunciation. Like I'm my 100% last name. white, according to my 23andMe. So. You are very yeah, white. I'm, but what did you think you were? Oh, I really thought I was Native, Native American. American. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah. I really wanted to be something cool, and I got it back, and I was like, um, 100% white. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Crash and burn. Yeah. Anyway. I'm half white. Yeah. <laughs> 13% black, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, you're super cool. Hey, you are. You're cool, cool with everyone. Got yeah, great skin. Yeah. Everyone skin just hates tone? me. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. The whites. Yeah. I hate the whites. Damn. I crash. am. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> This is starting out really well. Oh. Okay, guys. So we have vodka in our uh, Fit Aid. Yeah, right we now. are. We are drinking vodka. <laughs> um, Man, oh, now I remember what I was gonna say. Yeah, uh, it doesn't mean anything. It, it's for no reason. But you said how they pronounce your name, Hindi. Yeah, some a lot so of like, people do. My last name is Ents. Yeah, and people pronounce it Ensi. Ensi. Yeah. yeah. Well, You're you like, know, uh, in the English language, that doesn't really make sense. Makes no sense. Yeah, no. it would have like a Y after it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I'm an English I-E? major. I E. I would think I E. I E. Yeah. Ents or E Y. But you did mention that you're starting to DJ. I am. What's your DJ name? That is a good question. It's Stop. up for debate now. Oh. I'm actually think it's going to be 13. percent Oh, I like okay. that because of my 23 and me. Okay. <laughs> okay. And people always ask me what I am, so okay. now I'm just going to say I'm 13. percent I yeah. like it. Okay. And they ask when they ask what are you, they mean what makes you brown. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, if yeah. I said, "Oh, I'm English Irish," they'd be right. like, "Uh, no, you're not." I go, okay. "Yeah, actually, I am half." But right. The brown part is. How much are you English Irish? Basically 25, 25. My dad's white. I'm so. 49. There you go. <laughs> Real white. <laughs> I'm like a 0.1% uh, Spanish. That's my brown part. All right. So if I had a DJ name, it'd be 0.1%. Perfect. Is that yeah. the brown part only coming out in your eye color and your hair color? Yeah, Because the rest sure. of you is very 49%. My hole's a little darker, <laughs> so, you know, there's that too. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> She's telling the truth. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> have not bleached it. No. If I was a DJ, it's gonna be DJ Unz. There you go. Unz, 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 Unz. I can't take credit for that. Someone else, like cre- you know, just pronounced my name really mm-hmm. fast. Mm-hmm. All right. So, one, yeah, we're drinking Life Aid. You guys have. We'll start from the beginning. <laughs> you were a chiropractor. Yeah. Yeah. Right here in Scotts Valley. Yeah. Are you still? No. Um. Yes, I still have my license, but I don't practice. Okay. I've been practiced for eight years. Okay. Yeah, I, that's how I got hooked into CrossFit because I was had my office right here, and then some of the higher ups from HQ started coming in to see me. And this is before CrossFit HQ had Maxim, their own gym, right? Is it Max? Uh, before that, oh, going to OG. Really? This is because I remember CrossFit I met you NSC. guys when you were taste testing. Yeah, yeah. This is before Maxim. It was called NSC North Santa Cruz. Okay, which is bullshit because it's Scotts Valley, <laughs> but they wanted to have. <laughs> 
<laughs> they sounded cooler. So this it's is easier. Back. It's you easier. You know Ronnie Boosie and um, gosh, who else owned that gym? Ronnie and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronnie Nico, my ex Ni- worked yeah, out there. Yeah, yes. yeah. So this is OG. That's where uh, the athletes used to work out when they come to town because CrossFit didn't have their own. Was gym Was it yet. Jason? Yeah. Bills? J- e- no. J- J- oh, J- Jason J Dog. They, they worked out there. Yes, worked out okay, there, okay. and there was a coach there. Yeah. It was one other guy. I'm I trying know, to I know, I know who you're talking about, but I can't. It was think several of the owners. Name. Anyway, yeah. yes. Started treating people from HQ, and then the athletes, and then the owners, and then they started roping me in to, hey, you got to come, you know, check out CrossFit, and I was like, all right, I'll check it out, because I remember Greg way back in the day, because when I was in college, home home for, uh, home on break, I'd have a membership at uh, World's Gym, which used to be World's Gym here in Scotts Valley. Gold's Gym in Santa Cruz right. and 24 Hour because it was like 10 bucks a month each. Right. And there were kind of different girls at each gym. So I would just <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, do exactly. a couple of days a week at each one. Yeah, 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 just have, be on the Hose rotation. in different area yeah, codes, yeah. you know? <laughs> and I remember... Hose in all codes. I remember seeing, you know, Greg like run in with like four or five people taking up two or three pieces of equipment then run out of the gym then they'd run back in and people would be like, what the fuck are you doing? You're using up all the equipment and, and then you wouldn't right. see him anymore, but then I'd see him at the next gym cause he'd get kicked out of that one and go to the next <laughs> oh, one that's and funny. Then go to the next one. Yeah. And so, uh, that was kind of like the early exposure, but then, yeah, I got a, working out at NSC, my first work. I'll never forget. I was like, I can't remember exactly what we were doing. I know there was running in it and a couple of my patients were in the class. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to pace with those guys. They're in pretty good shape, but I should be able to beat them. You know, blah, 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 right with them on round one. Then it came to round two and something just started seizing in my body. And I <laughs> went over to the bushes and I don't like to puke. I puke like once every oh, yeah. 10 years in dire circumstances. So I'm holding onto the fence. I'm like, oh God, I can't puke. I can't puke. And I'm just sitting there as everyone's just looping me, laughing. I finally finished. Everyone's applauding me. My last place finish. I'm like, all right, I guess I got some work to <laughs> Isn't do. Isn't that the worst? I'm the sorry. Worst. I know that everyone like loves that in CrossFit. Like, and that's a really cool thing, but I'm always that last person. I'm always like, get the fuck away from me. Don't applaud me. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't hands, I'm like, never coming don't back. Shame me. Just keep like, doing. Go on with your day. Don't watch me finish last. Yeah, like, go clean on up with and your go day. home. Yeah. <laughs> go on like, with your day. Don't look at me. I know. I'm with you. <laughs> That's how I am. And then oh, there's you always finish oh, yeah. last. Okay. <laughs> I always finish yeah, last. Yeah. All Gina. right. Yeah. Oh, I know you do. Uh, oh, just wait. There are people though that they get really upset. We have some at our gym. They get really upset if they're, if people are still doing anything and anyone, even if like you have somewhere to be, you have an appointment. Oh, it's like cleaning up. If you're cleaning up your equipment before the workout's over, they're pissed. Really? Oh yeah. Oh jeez. Tell them not to come work out at our (laughs) HQ (laughs) because... I'm like done. I'm like, Girl, peace out. Yeah. Oh, same. Yeah, I got shit yeah. to do. Like, you got 20 more minutes? I got something to do. Yeah. We're good. Same. Like, see ya. I'll give you a high five when yeah. you come by my desk later. <laughs> Me and go. Gina, it's like right. if, if if her or I like start cleaning up because we finish, the other person's just like, oh, are we done? Oh yeah, cool. Me too. Oh, is that it just it? cleans up their oh, well, stuff. No, too. I was gonna say when you when you included me, I was like, I just quit whenever you quit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that was a five minute workout. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it uh, wasn't anywhere. So yeah, it. anywhere close to being done. Anyway, so you you were a chiropractor. Yeah, and ten you just years, ten years. So how did you? What interests you into beverage? Yeah, well, how do you get into that? Do you want the corporate line or do you want the real? No, story? I want the real story. The real, story. real nitty gritty. I'm gonna taste it. Right now. The real story. I've been tasting it. Well, even the corporate line is still true. I mean, everything with, that we put out is true, but there's more to the story than just the corporate line. I'd say that the truest version is, you know, Ryan and I did meet at CrossFit North Santa Cruz. Um, we started hanging out a little bit. He was writing for the paper, the Scotts Valley Banner. I used to write for the paper. I was actually waiting to see him in town because I was pissed because he was, wrote a column bagging on gold. And like I had like all my money was in gold at the oh. time, like literally <laughs> holding gold in my safe. So I'm like, this fucker, I can't wait to see him. He doesn't know what he's talking about, that piece of shit financial advisor. <laughs> and I see him in the gym and I'm like, uh-huh, here's this guy. And um, I find out... Uh, that he's a DJ because Ronnie liked uh, house music. He's like, oh yeah, Ryan DJ. I'm like, oh yeah, you're a DJ. Hmm, you're probably no good, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> so I don't think anything of it. And I run into him a couple more times at the gym. Well, lo and behold, we're at a school fundraiser, Rama and I. And uh, and I run into him and his wife there. And I'm like, what are you guys doing here? Oh, our kid goes to Mission Hill here in Scotts Valley. 
Oh, ours does too. What grade? Kindergarten. Oh, ours too. What teacher? Same teacher. Yeah. And then we find out from our kids that they're recently best friends in kindergarten. We're like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So we're at the school fundraiser, and then uh, Ram and I are like, all right, well, fun hanging out, but we're out of here. We're going to go party. And uh, Orion and his wife look at us, and we're like, well, we like to party. Where are you guys going? <laughs> Like, ah, you probably don't like to party like us. Like, you know, we're going <laughs> to we go want strong really in the party. hole. And they're like, no, we're, we're really like committed. Party. So anyway, long story short, we end up back at their house and Orion gets out the turntables and starts spinning and we do like a 4 a.m., you know, DJ oh God, dance party at the house. And so, you know, friendship developed. And, you know, a couple years later, probably about a year and a half later, invited him to a party called Three Degrees that I helped uh, coordinate it's like a pre-compression pre-burning man party about three to four hundred people every year up it used to be we used to hold it up in willits up in northern california in 600 acre property like 25 30 djs you know beautiful wow. event and him being a dj i figured you know i wanted to introduce him to the crowd and all our friends and then hopefully he could get a dj spot slot there and i was handing out um uh, five HDP and milk thistle and B vitamins because you know we're basically not sleeping much for a few days straight and we're serotonin depleted. And then we had this idea when we were all fucked up is like, hey, we should put these into a little packet instead of having to buy full bottles of everything and call it party pills. Yeah. And then we could sell it on Seven Eleven counters, you know, <laughs> yeah, that, right. that people didn't have yeah. to buy, you know, the full bottle of everything. And so we actually started down that path. And uh, we were getting artwork developed and registered some domains around party pills and some IP. And then, I mean, I know you're old enough, Gina, for uh, to remember <laughs> this. You're closer to my age. Brooke, maybe too. I'm, I'm older than you, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't so know if I'll you remember. Probably don't remember. I was, I probably but you remember Nodos? Oh, yeah, I do, yeah. for sure. Okay, yeah. 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 So for those younger generation out there, yeah. Nodos was a thing when we were in high school. It was basically... It was basically like crank. It, it was, was like legal. crank. Like, it was but, legal crank. Right. But basically, Nodos was a, a, this major like what you would upper take to study. you would take to study. Yeah. yeah. And we started thinking, well, if supplements or pills, if supplements in pill form were the way to go, Nodos would be a billion dollar company and Red Bull wouldn't be around mm -hmm. you know, today. Right. But Nodos is gone and Red Bull is what it is. So we're like, hey, we should put these in a drink form. And that's when the concept of Raverade came about. Stop it. Yeah. So we were going to, so basically <laughs> we took all those supplements story. and put them in a, uh, we're putting in a mechanic calling it Raver Aid. Some friends of ours that uh, owned a production company in LA, we pitched them on the idea because they were throwing festivals. Right. And they're like, nope, can't do it. No, no, no. It's not called raves anymore. <laughs> you know, they're festivals. It's too edgy. Uh, it's true. Yeah, right. You know, no one wants to touch a rave. And uh, we're like, damn it. We're like, okay, we'll tone it down. So we called it Party Aid instead of Raver Aid. And then uh, in January 2011, we're uh, in Orion, or back at Orion's house doing another DJ dance party, and it's his birthday, and we're like, hey, we need to register Raverade as a domain name. Let's, let's make this happen. And so we get on the computer, and we get Raverade.com for $12. <laughs> well, we're like, well, shit, we CrossFit. There's no drinks in CrossFit yet. Let's see if Fit Aid's available. Fit Aid's available. We golf once a week. Let's see if Golf Aid's golf <laughs> available. Stop it. So we registered 80 domain names on his birthday. We even got BonerAid.com for $12, <laughs> which we still own. So anybody out there that wants to get into porn... Contact me for that the right price. So we'll let it go. Good. Oh my Boner god. Aid. Boner so, aid. I feel like we could make really awesome, like Holy fake shit. commercials for all of your other domain right? names. Yeah, we have oh. some funny ones. Really good ones. Yeah. We oh have some my funny god. Ones. I love that. Those but like, that was uh, it. Like I mean, that's the start night. of it. That's the genesis, and then from there, it's just figuring it out. You know, we. Yeah. Uh, so we, like, how do you? So how do you go from that? Like one night, like just getting all the domains to like all of a sudden, like, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna be. Uh, we're gonna be a beverage company like yeah. how do you like how do you get the hookups like how do you yeah. like who's going to distribute who's going to make it who's going to yeah so we started researching and the really the first thing there's two things that happened at once once one we needed to find a can manufacturer we would know knew we wanted to be in cans because even back then we we're like look plastics ruining the planet and i'm not an enviro but i got a place in hawaii and there's plastic sure. shit right you know i've been to thailand like plastic single-use plastic yeah, to go bye-bye i mean right. come on it's just you know so we knew we wanted to be in something recyclable we knew we wanted you know clean products no garbage in it and uh so the first thing is like okay well we need to get a can right so there's this company called rexham that at the time was the largest can manufacturer in the united states so we call them up and i, I gotta preface this by saying 
the beverage industry has a 99% failure rate. Okay. Yeah, 95% right. of bever- new beverage companies me. fail in the first year. Wow. 99% fail in the first five years. So we call up the West Coast rep for Wrexham and he knows the stats. We are totally green. We know nothing and we don't have that much money in, in the bank account for this company. We, Ryan and I each put in 30 grand each. It was basically our savings at the time. Sure. And uh, the, the guy from Wrexham says, you know, what are you looking for? He's like, well, the minimum can runs 202,000 cans, which we didn't have enough money for. And we said, well, we've been researching. We heard these, these things called silver bullets. And a silver bullet is basically, imagine this can that it's not printed on. It's just blank. Okay. okay? It's just silver. Okay. And he said, well, all cans are made to order. We really don't have silver bullets. Occasionally, you know, there's some overages or something that don't get printed, but it's not likely. Like, basically, you guys are broke. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. Stop wasting my time. Right. the the... The, the gist of it. The gist of it. Yeah. So we hung up and we're sitting there like, fuck, there goes our great idea. <laughs> and uh, we had another idea. We said, <laughs> wah, well, hey, wah. let's uh, send him a handwritten note saying, hey, thanks for the call today. And we included a hundred dollar Roos Chris gift certificate in it, gift card in it and said, hey, if any silver bullets show up, please let us know. And sent that. Well, lo and behold, about a week later, we get a phone call. Hey, I got two pallets of silver bullets and... You know, we were off to the races. So, uh, yeah, after that, we went down to a flavor house in L.A., which is basically a a chemistry lab. And, you know, I handed them the formulas and said, hey, this is what we want to put into a drink. And we don't want to use any sucralose or aspartame and no sodium and you know, no artificials. And can we make it? And the lady's like, no, you can't make that. You know, it's like there's too much in it and you you can't do it without jacking the sugar up or using artificials. And then we're like, all right, well, we're out of here. We'll go somewhere else. And then she's like, well, let's, you know, let's give it a shot and we'll try it. And if people are super OG, they'd remember the first can of Fit Aid actually tasted like shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was barely, I barely totally remember palatable. That. Barely. <laughs> but fortunately, we've gotten a lot better at it. And, you know, over time. You, I remember you I was things. at Maxim and DJ. Like I met Daniel when he was coaching. That's when I first moved out here. And you guys had brought in some like blind taste tests. Yeah. And we yeah. were ta- we were tasting them. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. But Look at you now. Yeah, Bone DJ, w- yeah. Yeah, DJ shit. We've been buddies with him since pretty I know. Much well, you know what's funny when I met him. He's a good I, dude. I no, I know. Him. You know what's he funny? Is I was driving to the airport uh, today and I was like, yeah, like we're doing this uh we're doing an interview with Aaron uh with Life Aid and he was like, "Oh, yeah. You know, what? just make sure that you mention the fact that uh their merchandising or their marketing's really great with that one really really good-looking guy like in his <laughs> <laughs> that's right he's you like know, our, yeah, he's our male yeah, model yeah yeah he's like that one really good looking guy and i remember uh years ago like i would drive we would like drive around he'd be like oh yeah we got to go buy fit aid he's like and he'd go pick up like packs of fit aid because he had like gone and done like modeling for you guys and he would get like free fit aid from it he's actually gotten better looking with age I mm-hmm. would say. oh you know, yeah i think so too aged very well yeah well and he I well mean, not if you ask his mom his mom told him that he looked very old <laughs> last time she saw him <laughs> But no, he has. He has. Well, and <laughs> over the last couple of years too, he just he grooms himself very well. <laughs> yeah, he, he keeps does. His, keeps he's his got hair cut. Almost a little metroish. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. His like, beard's yeah. always yeah, nice. Yeah, it's like his perfectly hair. trimmed. <laughs> yeah. He's looking tight. His hair's all perfect. I see him random places yeah. too. I saw him in the airport like two yeah. weeks ago. I saw him downtown yeah. last week. I'm like, hey, like, hey, hey, handsome DJ. guy. Yeah. Hey, hey, handsome yeah, guy. So you want a model for us? Gay, but if I was, but minimally, we'll put you on the website. Also, let me know when you start porn because boner aid. Yeah, DJ, exactly. we have a new product for you. <laughs> How big is your schlong? <laughs> we uh, we loved you so much that we actually want to have a whole new campaign around Just you for you. <laughs> Not really you, but your D. Uh, it's actually funny because put the D in one DJ. time. Yeah, but seriously. Oh my god, that's a perfect slogan. No, we were. Um, it was the last time Brooke was at regionals, and you guys had your booth down there in San Diego, and there was a big banner on the bottom. And Brooke was doing um, like a meet and greet and there was this huge line and we were taking video of like, you know, like this huge line that was like waiting to like meet her. And then I took a video of Daniel standing next to the fit aid because he's like on the picture on the bottom (laughs) (laughs) and he's literally like, hey guys. (laughs) I'm here. Like anybody want to meet me? Like anybody want to sign some autographs? Like (laughs) it's really funny. So uh, the kids love him. Yeah, they do. The kids. yeah, they do love him. Okay, so you so you basically started from those silver 
the silver. I'm like, I can't silver even say bullets. it because apparently my vodka yeah. fit just kicked in the silver yeah. bullets. At, okay. At what point in the, uh, the journey, I was going to say I the guess, journey. Would you say that it started to be profitable in a way that you got away from silver bullets? Yeah. Well, we were still, you know, I still had my practice full time. So did Orion. Um, and what t- it, it it probably took a good year and a half of just kind of grinding it out and burning money. I mean, you got to remember, we launched basically three products at the same time. We had w- within a very short period, we had Fit Aid for the CrossFit market, Golf Aid for golf, and Party Aid, the the previous Raver Aid for kind of the party community. Where do you think it was taking off more? Well, Golf Aid was actually making us all our money. Not really? Fit Aid, yeah, Golf Aid was making. Like we did like 750k in golf raid like in the first year I think so wow. we were selling a lot to the golf courses but we had three different websites we had three different social media handles it was like everything was separated on purpose because the golf community and the CrossFit community and the, and the rave community are three totally <laughs> very, different very communities different. Right? Very so we different. didn't want to like cross pollinate right and it was totally stressful we were burning through tons of cash because we're trying to be relevant in three separate communities right we're doing outfit changes from like fire dancing to lulu to <laughs> polo golf polo shirts that's and, so funny um plaid and, pants and one of my, you know, good friends and, and mentors uh, took me aside and, and he knew the, the challenges that we were having because, you know, I had I had sold my practice and the guy that I sold it to took my golden goose and killed it and BK'd on me. So that was my sole source of income. Right. And and so I had just bought the property up in Bonnie Dune off the grid and we were living in a trailer, you know, 400 square foot trailer and I had two kids. Wow. So I, and then all of a sudden I had no income, zero. And I already burned through all my savings. So I'm totally broke. I'm living in a trailer and we've got, you know, we're, we're boiling water on the stove to, to take baths. We're living out of ice chest. We're eating like mac and cheese and tuna every night because we've got no money. And that's like a dollar 25 yeah. meal for anyone who's broke out there. Right. And uh, so it got to be like really tough, really dark times. And so I called my buddy Ben, who's, you know, super successful. And, you know, I'm like basically crying to him. Like, I am fucked, bro. Like, <laughs> you have no idea how fucked I am. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm in my early 30s. I'm supposed to be in my prime. And I've made all these promises to my wife. And, you know, da, da, da. like we were supposed to only be sure. living in the trailer for a few months while we build our dream house on the top of the property. Right. And, uh, and he's like, man, he's like, I've. I'm a member of this marketing group. It's not cheap to join, um, but I think you'd get a lot of benefit from it. It's 25 grand. He's like, I'll tell you what, I'll pay for it. Just pay me back when you can, if you want to join. Wow. And I'm like, if you think it's worth it, I'll do it. So I just like, I mean, I was leveraged to the max. I had 260 grand in student loans. I had my mortgage. I had, you know, fucking everything. Normal life, wife, kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, and no money. And then I'm like, all right, well, I'm already so fucked. Like, what's another 25 grand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and so we go, you know, go to this uh, marketing deal with a bunch of really successful, really smart people and basically spilled my guts on what my issue was. And they're like, dude, you're spread too thin. You got to cho- choose a single target market. Choose a single target market. So I came back, you know, sat down with Ryan. It's like, dude, we got to choose a single target market. We got three businesses here and none of them are doing great. Right. And uh, so we looked at everything. And even though Golf Raid was bringing in the majority of the income, the trajectory of Fit Aid, meaning like the sell in and the sell through, how much product we were moving across it, even though it was a small number at the time, was was had a greater trajectory than that of Golf Raid. So we just did a full pivot and we literally put let the other two party aid and, and golf go on cruise control. And we put all of our time, money and effort into making fit aid a success and just wow. fucking ground it with fit aid. And that's why people know fit aid. Today, yeah. You know. And what a gamble and look how it came out. So cool. Thank God. I know yeah, it's like you rolled the dice on the right one. <laughs> Thank God. Jeez. Is that going to happen for me and you? <laughs> 
I keep just trying to roll that dice. Like, but I also uh, give credit to, you know, some of our early influencers that we're still friends with today. I mean, you know, Dan Bailey came on and supported us super early on, and that really helped legitimize the, the product in this community. And then people like, you know, Jackie and Christmas that we're still super close with today, you know, early on. And, and just it, it really was a relationship game. I mean, you guys know Kill Cliff launched the exact same year that we did. They're East Coast, we're West Coast, mm -hmm. and they were super well funded. They had all the athletes, all the money, all the you know momentum, and we were just like this little underdog, you know, underfunded thing. But it was like we just want to treat everybody well. Like even the rise and fall of progenics, I saw how they were doing things. I'm like, that's not how we ever want to operate. It's like, oh, if you're in the club, you're good. But if you're outside the club, fuck you. you. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, that's not okay. Like, right. just let's just treat everybody good. Everybody right. good, regardless. It's like good karma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like those that you meet on the way up are the same people you meet on the way down. Yeah. So it's just, you know. And and some uh, of the best, like some of the earliest advice I ever got before... I got really good. I became really known in CrossFit or like got really good at CrossFit. Uh, Jenny LeBas said to me, she said, just be the person on the way up that you want to be on the way down. Yeah. Which is, yeah. I'm still working on Same that. Thing. I'm just kidding. Good thing you haven't fallen yet. Let's change. <laughs> let's change the way you treat me. At the end of the day, everything's about relationships, right? right? I mean, I don't give a shit how much, you know, money or fame or anything that anyone has. Like, if they're an asshole, they're an asshole. Right. Nothing mm -hmm. changes that. Like, what does change is it tends to accelerate your current propensities. Meaning, if you get money and fame and you're a douche, you're going to be even a douche. An extra douche. Times extra right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and at some point, yeah. that won't hold up. Right. 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 Who's going to be at your funeral? Like, we're all going to die. Right. You know, who's going to be there? Like, who's what's going to be said about you? Oh, they're a total asshole and they fucked right. everybody? Or, hey, you know, they treated people well. And, right. you know, I mean, that's so it's kind of thoughts that always go through my mind. Like, who do I want at my funeral? You know, is, um, remind myself of my own mortality and sure. where we came from. And, you know, we still got so far to go. I mean, we're, we're, and it was like, hey, dude, you're only like, yeah, industry. you're still we're too spec. young. You're not, you're not yeah. dying yet. <laughs> well, hopefully not. But you're too right. Soon. <laughs> but no. you're right. <laughs> Get a few more I'm things. I'm like, well, you're going dark. You're going really dark. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you're right. Do you find that in, in beverage, um, that there are, you have to like stay on your toes? Like, are they making changes a lot or is like, cause it is, it seems like a pretty cutthroat sort of industry, like any food and beverage type of situation. Cause there's new stuff coming out all the time. There's new things that are coming out that are exactly like something else, but slightly different. Uh, have you kind of encountered any moment where something maybe did change and you guys had to sort of adjust on the fly or has it been? Yeah. Constantly adjusting on the fly. I mean, we're always looking to improve products. So we had a, a nutritionist email in once and she's like, hey, you're using a synthetic form of vitamin E in your Fit Aid and there's a natural form available, a DL form that's even better. And I looked into it and I go, shit, she's right. And and so even though it increased our cost of goods by going to the natural form, it was a better thing to do. And so we did it. Um, always pivoting. I mean, we were the first company to come up with a nootropic drink, you know, focus it. Now there's 20 nootropic drinks all fighting for the same shelf space. You right. know, like we were the first company really to have function forward instead of flavor forward. You notice we have one flavor, mm -hmm. but we have multiple functions. Now, you know, there's lots of competition from other drink companies and shots and, you know, the big boys are always trying to rip you off. And, and so there's always, you know, pressure, but it keeps you on your toes. And it's like, at the end of the day, you know, you have to resonate with consumers and uh, the, the more you're pushing forward and continually innovating and staying ahead of the curve, you can't worry about the competition, what the competition's doing that, you know, I've had things where they're c literally copying my offer, copying my marketing campaign, like verbatim, not even right. changing things, right. like where the red X is and like everything is said. I'm like, holy fuck, this is blatant plagiarism. And it right. used to bug the shit out of me. But now I'm like, well, if you're using, doing that, I did that two years ago. Like sure. I already on the other yeah. stuff. So right. it's just like training probably like, oh yeah, someone's trying to cut. Well, look, I'm already more advanced than that. You right. know? So yeah. just staying ahead of the game and I don't mind the competition at all. And I try to, you know, really bring up, especially young entrepreneurs that are doing good things in the world, because if it wasn't for my mentors, you know, we wouldn't be here. And, and so trying to really reciprocate and, and, and help, you know, young people out that, that were, 
avoid some of the pitfalls that I think that we made. Right. Maybe I need a mentor. <laughs> key. I, I definitely need Aaron, a mentor. Aaron, do you know my mentor? Key. <laughs> key. I'm, all, I'm a phone call away. You know that, Brooke. <laughs> he is. He's a phone call away. Um, okay, so you guys have nine products, correct? Is that correct? I don't know. I, I think that's correct. <laughs> I found it on your LinkedIn page. <laughs> We have a connection like on LinkedIn because we um, have some of the zeros now. So yeah, get, that's what I mean. So I you have the you have the golf raid, fit, focus, life, party, immunity, golf, fit zero, RX, RX zero, and CBD. So we have ten now. Oh, okay. And you just launched the CBD. We did. I'd bring one tell here, but I think it's sold out. So tell me, any. tell me about uh, when did you decide that you wanted to put it in a drink? I've been taking CBD for. Probably six or seven years now, long before it was, you know, trendy um, and always been a fan. Or in sport I, became even clear for right, sport. Right, 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 right. I mean, it's all the cannabinoids are powerful. Like mm -hmm. it's not, you know, everyone talks about CBD now, but in the long term, I already know it's going to be broad spectrum yep. hemp with CBV, C, CBDV, CB? CBG, CBN. Like yeah. they all, and they and all. It needs to be. Hopefully. I think it needs to be. And there's synergy behind them. So, you know, we had had a broad spectrum hemp from Ohio Energetics, which if anyone knows the industry and researches, it's just, they're just, the best product out there. They have a nano encapsulation process, no petroleum base whatsoever. So like super really good, high quality, efficacious, um, bioavailable product. Uh, but they also happen to be the most expensive on the market. And it's like, okay, well, if we're going to do this, we're going to have it broad spectrum. We're going to have it THC free. So all the cannabinoids X THC, cause I wanted it available for police fire sure. first mm -hmm. responders, right. which they can't have Anyone's any, getting tested. any THC. Sure. In it. And we knew we wanted broad spectrum and we knew we wanted to use like the best around. So we had been working on this product for a while and it was just, do we launch it? Do we not? The regulatory environment, you know, risk reward, that type of thing. Yeah. And then, is it, is it hard? Is it hard to get it, uh, for the reg like for regulations to get it through? Well, I mean, it's because FDA hasn't approved no, it No, I yet. know. No, I know. But I'm just saying yeah. like, as far as, as, uh. It well, as an a, isolate, I, I believe that it will never be legal. And the reason I right, say that okay. is because it has been approved by FDA for treatment of adolescent epilep right, epilepsy, of, yeah, which puts seizures. it as a prescription drug. Right. Okay. Now, I don't know of, and I could be wrong on this, but I don't know of any current prescription that's allowed in food or beverage or supplement. Okay. okay? It's because it's a prescription. Right. There's a different class. Right. right. So... Uh, CBD as an isolate, an isolate form, which I'm not a fan of anyway. I mean, I, there's benefits there, but I, I would rather have it in a broad spectrum. Okay. Um, is, is a drug. So we knew, you know, we wanted a broad spectrum product to stay clear of, of having, having know, to prescription. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So we believe that we're still in the clear. It does obviously contain CBD but not as an, an isolate form. Right. Um, so we weighed kind of the cost benefit and knew that it was a, a great ingredient. I wouldn't want to start a company as a standalone CBD company. I, right. I, you know, there's a lot there's of challenges there. There's a lot of there. shit to go through. But right. we also have a, you know, a massive list. We have 300,000 people on our email list. We have 10,000 gyms. And so having the distribution channel, that's what a lot of people don't think. They're like, oh, if we build it, they will come. Bullshit. Like right. if you haven't thought through your marketing and your distribution channel, then you could have the best product in the world. You could have the cure for cancer, but if nobody knows about it and you don't have a means for people to know about it, then it does no one any, any good, good except for right. yourself. <laughs> right? right, right. So we already have the distribution channel. So that's why we decided to pull the trigger on it. It was like, well, we have the distribution channel. We know all the other drinks on the market. We know we've got the best one. So let's go ahead and, and move forward with it. Right. Now. When you were down, you had mentioned that you went down to a, a big beverage conference that was just in L.A.? Yeah, mm -hmm. Santa Monica. Did they have, I guess, did you learn anything new about kind of CBD in beverage? Is that something that's kind of growing for them to be talking about or discussing? Oh, yeah, like yeah. That? Well, you got Super an award, high. right? Yeah, we did. We got Rising Star. Hey, you are a rising you star. You are a rising star. star. Nine years a star has been rising. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, dude, I feel like I've been up there for a while. It's not about how oh, long. It's about hair. how high. Like, I was finally, finally, you recognized With it. With all my grades, it'd be more like a falling star. <laughs> I have a ton of them, too. It's just I just cover them all oh, the time. That's why I'm wearing a hat. Like, who is that old man? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's very cool, though. You guys got that. Yeah, no, it's yeah. cool to get recognition yeah. in the industry as much as I minimalize it or whatever is yeah I mean it, it's it's cool yeah right? it's cool it should and be it's cool to be the cute girl at the party is what I, I yeah I 
compare it to. You know, when you're cruising around, there's what thousands does that feel of like? brands. <laughs> I know, you know, it's like, yeah, I know. I'd love to feel like but that. What you does, know but exactly what, that, what that feels like. What does that feel like? <laughs> you know exactly what that feels like. <laughs> that is, I mean, oh, man. Yeah, I've, like, working with uh, Pure Spectrum, but, like, I've been taking CBD for a long time. I started taking it um, before it was cleared for sport. Yeah. And that was because I... Well, I was filming Wonder Woman, but I had been taking so much ibuprofen because I had such bad tendonitis in my knees. I had dosed too much. And so I couldn't take it anymore. And I came home and I was still trying to train and I was just having so much inflammation and pain that I remember I called and spoke to um, Justin Berg. Mm -hmm. And I basically wanted to ask him because my chiropractor or physical therapist had basically mentioned like um, CBD patches. Yeah. And that something like that on the area would, you know, I could do something like that for pain management and inflammation, yeah. even though I can't take ibuprofen. And basically for in CrossFit, they were like, well, we can't tell you not to do it, but we can't tell you, you can do it. And I was like, this. That's very ambiguous. So like, you're saying like, there's either, a chance. It's like, well, either, I feel, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, I feel like if I should and you should just say no. And if I should, you should just say yes. It's like you're either like, you kind of want to catch me in a drug test or you kind of don't want to catch me in a drug test. And so it wasn't in competition season. And I was in Sacramento working for um, Trifecta and I was at a gym and they had some topical that someone had come in and they were selling it at this gym. And so I bought some to try. And I remember because so many people are like, oh, it's, it doesn't work. It's a placebo. And I'm like, okay, you know, it, if it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's okay. It works for me. I literally was in so much pain. I was squatting and I took my knee sleeves off. I took a bunch of the topical and I just like rubbed it on my knees, pulled my knee sleeves back up. And it was a matter of minutes yeah. that I felt so much better. And then the problem I ran into after that was, you know, cause not every company or where they're getting it from is created equal. So right. it was hard for me to find, you know, new sources that like gave me effect that made it's a me powerful feel powerful anti-inflammatory. I mean, yeah. there's plenty of research out there. And if you want to find out for yourself, go to PubMed, pubmed.com. That's where it, all the index of published research is. So anything you want to find out about, you can look at PubMed, PubMed. and look at any abstract and then dig deeper into the research articles, but everything that's been published in reputable publications is there. And you can see article after article after article publication on the efficacy of not only CBD, but to a lesser body of evidence on other cannabinoids. Okay. Do they test for THC in CrossFit? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's bullshit. I yeah, like, I don't but know. I know, I know, plant, yeah, people. I know on. a lot of people that prohibition needs to end. I know people that smoke <laughs> that, that partake year round i can't believe they test for that i don't know i don't know why that why Who they cares? would think that, that would give you an edge because you would because they <laughs> it's a vasodilator so i mean i took before i work out <laughs> i know so many people that do i remember in college i had a buddy that would get really high and go to the gym see i'm so old that like back in the day like you would smoke weed and you never knew what was in it you know what I mean? Thank you for calling it weed and not and cannabis, then, by yeah, the way. No, I'm fucking was, shoot myself if I hear yeah, cannabis. No, cannabis. Like, weed, was, people. Yeah, you'd smoke weed. Like, I think I smoked weed my entire, like, junior year. And, like, it, it never made me feel motivated. Like, I would have never gone to the gym. Yeah, I just would have eaten people a ton differently. of food. It, it depends, depends on, on the strain, strain, too. Well, now the I strain. know. Like, now there's, like, all these strains. It's like, it's, like, so different than when I was, you know, I'm younger. the opposite. I'm ADD, so I smoke indica i can't have any sativa they say sativa is what you smoke to like kind of as an upper and indica when you want to go to sleep i'm the opposite like indica puts me in flow state like i can train i can be up half, yeah. half the night on indica sativa locks me up and i get all fuck it fucks up my body i'm miserable on sativa <laughs> indica really? i'm like a fucking well-oiled machine <laughs> Well, so for you, you probably, if you were in competition, you could not be on that. Because Let's it try would just some different strains. Let's try some you. different strains with you, Gina. Oh, <laughs> with me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. If you struggle with weed because you get paranoid or whatever, yeah. pay attention to the strain and go extreme. Go all indica and all sativa and then see how that affects your body. It, does. it took me like 20 years to figure this out. I'd be like... Smoke. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, we live in San Francisco, so <laughs> let's be real. I went like, to SLD. I, mean, I, I don't have yeah. 20 years. It's like, so I'll be like starting 70. at 16, how old am I now? Five years. Yeah. But some days I would be like, you know, all like locked up and miserable and tight. And like, oh. you're like, and then you other look, days I'm like, oh, I feel so good. I'm like, 
Gosh, I don't. I can never figure sometimes it out. Sometimes I feel I great, should. and sometimes Wait, I feel like shit. Tight, you look like you're like on like, uh, like, <laughs> like, like like you're on like, like meth or something, like, like grinding my teeth. And I'm like, maybe it has something to do with the strain. I had this bright idea. It took oh, me yeah. 20 years to figure it out. I started writing now, like, oh, I took this. Hey. Wait a second. That shit fucks well, me Well, that's up. what's crazy is, like, I, like, recently went into, like, a, well, not recently, like, a year ago, went into an actual, like, weed shop, you know, because I hadn't smoked for so long. Yeah. And it was, like, when I was in high school, it was, like, whatever showed up. Right. Right? There was no choice. Yeah, there was like, no choice. You whatever weren't, like, oh, local. I'm going to, like, have? figure out which weed. strain this I'll is. Take it. Yeah, it's weed. It's, it's like, whatever oh, okay. It was called a dime bag. It could bag. be laced with anything. Yeah, it could be laced with anything. And you'd smoke it, and you'd be like, oh, oh that was weird. Or I fell off the deck. Let's or go to Taco I ended Bell. up in a dog bed. Or I was in Taco Bell. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to Taco like, Bell yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. You never, like, really, it's really new. But, like, now... And I remember, like, I went into the weed shop for the first time. I was like, what the hell is this? They're, like, behind glass cases. It's all you know? official now. Yeah. Would you like it in yeah. chocolate form? Yeah, I know. And, I, and they were like, well, what kind of high do you want? I was like, uh. I'm uh, trying to go to sleep. I just want to go to sleep. Oh, well, you want this and you want that. And da, da, da. And I was the like, best I had was a no couple idea. years ago a science when it was this. your medicine. Because then it was all medical, right? Oh, so right. I had my medical card. Oh, right. Uh, what kind of medicine can I get for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm just trying to get begged, buddy. Like, give me the indica. <laughs> I mean, I would have to bite my cheek <laughs> to be talking about my medicine. I'm like, bro. I'm not sick. Yeah. I'm not sick. <laughs> I don't have cataracts. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Uh, glaucoma. Uh, anyways. Oh, boy. I feel like we've regressed the whole time. I know. Well, that's, that's usually We're what happens on our podcast, unfortunately, Aaron. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, good, good. We tried to I'm, warn I'm you ahead of time that, that we don't I apologize we don't really, in advance to the audience. <laughs> we don't really right? have a format. Oh, no, they definitely don't mind. No, okay. Yeah, they, they we've, don't mind. We, we officially know <laughs> now because they communicate with us actually so great, so well. I was reading I emails the day that they love it. They, they like yeah. love that it doesn't have a format. They love that it's like this conversation. Yeah. They're just they here really on the love couch it. And I'm with like, us. thank God, because this is all we know how to do. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> just <laughs> is all say things that are inappropriate. We don't. Man. Many times we've had we've had podcasts where we sit down and we we press play, and me and Jeannie go, "All right, what do you want to talk about?" Uh, <laughs> we've covered sex and drugs. Yeah. I feel like we should hit on rock and roll or oh, something. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. I mean. I mean, I would try, but there's there's not a, any rock and no roll rock and roll in you. Well, I mean, wow. I like grew up going to punk shows. Okay, yeah, oh, you you're did. a punk girl. I was a yeah. punk girl. In a, in her sisters have a band, like the late '80s. Did you have? Like, oh, I wore black lipstick. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, were you? Oh, mod? Yeah. It was called a mod, right? Yeah. Mod. Was that oh, the, oh, was that, you know what? That's that funny mod. that you know that. Yeah, I'm mod old. is not like a well-known thing. Mm. Hey, mod. Yeah, mod, mod was more like if you were. Um, it's like the black lipstick and no, the black fingernails. No, so mod was mod. more like if you wore like um, old clothes, like from the '60s. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. like you would like. Uh, but you're right. It was still yeah. kind of like in that same genre. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I got pregnant. That's a weird thing to segue into. I got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember which button it is. It goes. I got, wah, yeah, wah, yeah. Wah. I got pregnant at a punk show no i didn't i didn't i i got pregnant and uh you know i was like 18 and i was still trying to go to punk shows and i remember i went to it was called johnny p bucks and the swinging udders now they're just the swinging udders the swinging udders the swinging udders but at the time they were called johnny you had swinging udders no, yeah, I didn't, no not, yet, not yet they I were had, coming yet. in no, I had the milk was coming in <laughs> did you get on stage and support no, people <laughs> No, I hadn't had the baby yet. No, so I was like newly pregnant. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to this really cool punk show. It's like, it's like it's always like underground, right? It's always like in a basement somewhere. And like I went there and I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, blah, 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 you know, and like the music's going and like the mosh pit starts going. And I was like, oh, I should probably protect my baby. And so I, like, <laughs> you know, I go in the corner and like this guy like bounces out of the mosh pit and like smashes into me and I was like oh I think my my career is over <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think this is it for me <laughs> <the best thing. laughs> yeah that's it oh. so yeah I know so that was that was it for me but her sisters have a have a punk well, band called H here kitty here kitty kitty here kitty kitty yeah like here it. kitty kitty pretty good uh -huh. yeah and then my brother-in-law we had him on the show he was yeah uh, joe he, he is uh, awesome now he does like the spiritual is uh spiritual af and whatever podcast but he, he's a he's, he's a he's, a he's very guy. cool guy you would like him a lot so he was the he was i mean he's been in tons of punk bands i remember uh he like in the santa cruz area um he was in fury 66 he was in oh, yeah i remember crucial unicorn uh -huh. <laughs> he was in uh 
Oh God, now I can't remember all of his name, all the names. But like we would go and take like our kids and like put them in like headphones, and they never knew how cool they were. We we're like, dude, you're at punk show. Nice. <laughs> you're a punk five. show. Yeah, you're like five and six. You know, super good parents. Joe has a anyway. really awesome recording studio. Oh yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, like, you're into music. Yeah, yeah, yeah like really. Go. We should do an album being recording a studio. DJ, contribute mm-hmm. something. Yeah, mm-hmm. Daniel and his and the boys will go up and rap, rap. Oh really? Have you ever oh, heard yeah. DJ rap? No. Oh my oh. gosh, they. Is he good? It's all, good all mm. the time. Yeah. Right on. Him and all of his buddies. Yeah. No. Uh, Joe has the studio. One time, um, was it for DJ's birthday? Yeah. And we tried to do a rap, and we were terrible. Yeah. And we decided that we Let's wouldn't do it, it again. Yeah. Do you no. remember it? No. Never, no. No. We were drunk one time in New Orleans and tried to rap. I thought we were so good. We also thought we were so good. I'm really good at. At rhyming Wait, when I'm I, drunk. I wish that I could, I wish I had my phone on me right now. I would, I would pull up Halloween a couple years ago. We did like a Mad Max theme and Brooke and I were like, this party's lame at my own house. <laughs> <laughs> we love the party. Oh, we're at my own house. We're in literally like Mad Max outfits. We have like, um, like those football shoulder pads and we'd like, glue we like looked feathers awesome. and all this shit to it. Right. We like looked super cool. We were like, yeah, let's blow this joint. We fucking <laughs> call we fucking, an Uber. Yeah, we go downtown. We get hammered downtown. Leave all my guests at the house. Come like as we're coming back. And downtown was way more lame. Than yeah, the house, it was but way we were lame, drunk. Way lame. And then as we're like walking back to the Uber, we're like trying to rap. And I, it was like, <laughs> I know how it started. You said okay. Okay, go. It. No, yeah, go, no, no, no. We're Gino's, not gonna actually Gino's, rap. Gino's like uh, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> That's already a hard one. It was uh, already bad to lead with. And then you were like, "Ghosts and ghouls." <laughs> I don't know what I said. And then, you know, I remember I know. when we were in New Orleans, we were out for a concert we were to, to the weekend. Yeah, we saw the weekend. We saw the Chainsmokers. Yeah, I, yeah, it was a really I cool. I vividly festival. remember being in the back of an Uber, so drunk. Yeah, and just, just bars. Yeah, we thought just been well, bars. I think you were doing a lot better than I was. I'm like I don't a really know what good, I'm like a really good you hype person. I like, like to party now that I think about it. I think about all the parties <laughs> we've thrown. And right? one consistency is you two getting your groove on, having some shots. Oh, well, you did host a really cool party at the games yeah. this last year. Yeah, it was yeah, fun. Yeah, we were and that was we, so fun. I felt like royalty. There's not too many we, CrossFit parties. It was pretty cool. No. You know? No. You know. But it was it was very cool. It was like uh We even got Dan Bailey there to have a drink. I was like Wow Dan Bailey. Yeah. That's a lot. I'm like, dude. Yeah. What, well, what else can we get you to do? So it's, <laughs> what? so it's funny is you guys hosted that party and Brooke and I were like, Oh, you know what? We gotta get up really early tomorrow. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna get there early and then we're gonna leave early. Yeah. You know? We're gonna start like, drinking we have to early. get up early. Right. And so we got there and it was like, I mean, I'm with Brooke, right? Yeah, you right? were the first ones there. I, yeah, we like, were the first we ones. Were, <laughs> we just <laughs> opened. <laughs> Right. We were the first uh, ones the there. Deal. It doesn't we officially were. start for a half hour, but <laughs> no. I'll get you a drink. <laughs> yeah. We're like, thank you. Um, yeah. we but po- you guys we, were so accommodating. We like to party at four, so we're in bed by 10 p.m. <laughs> like, huh, okay. Now my age is making sense, We right? party like yeah, we're yeah, 50 because Gina's almost 50. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no. So it was so cool because we did like you guys were so accommodating. Like we got there and it was so funny because I'm like with her and everywhere I go with her, it's like, you know, it's a CrossFit thing. So they're like, oh, you come here, <laughs> like what, like come doing the, the wave in. And yeah. then we go in and we have like this cool table and then like we're sitting there and like you were so great. You were like coming over you're like, oh, do you need anything else? You need more drinks, anything? You know, and I was like. Sure. Whatever she wants, sure, yeah. <laughs> and then it was actually it was very cool because then as the night like went on, because there was like that barrier, yeah. you know, like between. We were in the VIP. Yeah, right? we were in the VIP. VIP. And then but, like, yeah, and the peasants were down below. Yeah, so many of them. were peasants. They were very cool people. They were all like down there like dancing and stuff. And I know, I jumped I over the. Jumped <laughs> over the, <laughs> over the little barrier and like went and danced. Yeah, it was like jumped while. over was like cool. the. It was like a railing. It was like a, a railing. A railing. Thing. Went yeah. and danced them. No. All the. um. What are they? Not Norwegians. Are they Norwegian? Mm. What's Sarah? Icelanders. Icelanders. Icelandics. Icelandics. <laughs> they Iceland- all like to party. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. I knew you were Icelandic. I've been there. I, I've been traveling a lot. They all start blending together. No, I don't know where they I They like to party. Now. Little, uh, what's his name? B- the BJ or what do they call him? Um, Little guy. Goodmanson? Like, yeah, Goodmanson. Yeah. He, he, he's gotten BKG. loose a few times. BK. And uh, Annie. I've seen her sideways a few a times. A little party? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen Annie. I mean, I also don't like 
party with them all the time. Yeah. But, but Sarah. Sarah. Me Sarah and Sarah. Gets down. Me and Sarah got down in Miami. Sarah gets a down. A few years Sarah ago. Gets down. So does I like uh, Cody partying with Cody Mooney and yeah. and uh, and those guys. They they have fun. And as well as the, the all the Misfit crew like to party. Oh, so, for sure. Yeah. What's the Misfit crew? Uh, it's a like Travis Williams. They have a bunch of athletes. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, see, I don't know everybody. But there's not a ton. Like if you uh-huh. really look at like the entire right. CrossFit ecosystem, there's probably more back in the day. I remember in the like when I first started getting into CrossFit stuff, or like maybe being around HQ. Like you know who's so fun at the after party. Fucking Annie Sakamoto. Oh, yeah. Oh. Annie, Annie is, she gets there, she competed all weekend, all week, gets there, and she is on the dance floor, breaking it down I until it that. shuts down. She showed up this year. She had a good time. I love her. Yeah, she just she's has awesome. like She's always like smile, just ear to ear. Oh, yeah. She is. Yeah. Yeah. We can all take a lesson from her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Turn that frown upside down, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Are you mad? No, it's just no, my natural No, I'm look. smiling. I just <laughs> had Botox. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All the girls in L.A. It's uh, just like every single one. Hey, is don't just, make fun. I have that shit, okay? I, yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, I know. But, I know. It's, no, I know. You know it's what extreme. it is? You know what it is? It's, it's, it's extreme. It's, it's bad. That whatever's becoming the fad. Yeah. They, which for a while, I guess, and probably still is like the Kardashians, right? The amount of girls that I see like on social, like on the explore page and things like that, they all they're beautiful. They all look the exact same. I know. I keep saying that. I keep saying that. Yeah. They all look the same. Like every single yeah. doctor is like, oh no, you yeah. Oh like I, I know people who are like, I don't know, like twenty six years old who've gone in there like, Oh, you need to pump up there your lip and you have to do this on your cheeks and this and that and it's like, What the fuck? Yeah, if you don't no, have you don't. if you don't have a doctor that will say no We're not making a bunch of clones. It's yeah. not a good doctor. It's a slippery slope. It's I a way like. slippery it slope. It is a slippery slope. I always, I always have like trolls on my on my pictures, whatever. Like comment about how every I've time ruined, you say that, I think of like a troll doll. Face. Literally, they're like, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> kidding. Again. They talk about how I've I've ruined my face, and I'm like, okay, if a little routine Botox because I'm 30 years old is ruining it, fuck me then. <laughs> I guess I'm ruining it. I'm like, I still have expression. I don't. I, yeah. No, I pe- know. The amount of people that th- I've. Okay. It's not that many. The amount of people. <laughs> it's not that many. But people that think. Aaron's that, like looking like, what am I supposed to say? People to that? think that my. People think <laughs> Can that I help my. Me out? I've got like right. some major. People think that my clothes. cheeks are, are fake. Oh, no. You just. Really? Don't. Think that I've had my cheeks done. And I'm like, I've no. posted photos of me when I was little and me now. Same Is fucking, that a thing? Same you fucking can get cheeks. cheeks done? Oh, yeah. I've had yeah. mine done. Really? Yeah, seriously. Well, but, but like, but like lightly. I mean, you can Not get like. What overly. does it mean to have them done? I, uh, well, you. I don't so, really know. You can have filler. So for me, because as you get older, for me, kind of like, this. like implants. No. Could they do that? Oh. No. Could no, they no, do no, no, that? No. Oh, I'm thinking like a boob job. No, like, no, I, no, I had no. them done. Like they stuff like. A no, little. I just had laser like two days ago, so I'm a little swollen right now. But like my, um, I had filler put in my cheeks because as you get older, especially you women, college. you and it just goes like this. Like you start to um. Kind of like uh, implode. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to. I don't know. Deflate. Yeah, like or like sag. So what they'll do is they'll put a little bit like beads of filler like right here, and then it'll just kind of like pull it up again. Huh. But some people overfill, and if like some people like Brooks age that are younger that are just trying to change their looks, they're like, oh, I don't have like defined cheekbones, so I'm just gonna like put all this shit in here. Well, you or can't like even overfill. tell that you two have had but that's, work. I must. But say. that's what I'm saying. In so, LA, you can tell every like. I don't want to overgeneralize, but it's like. I mean, it's like gone extreme. Well, like they went too many pumps with the right. Oh yeah, they don't want any or, wrinkles. Is the problem, or and they so, or they they don't want any wrinkles. Plus, they want like they want like big lips when they have small DS, lips. Or DSL, they, yeah, the duck su- duck sucking, <laughs> <laughs> duck sucking. You lips. want duck exactly sucking lips? Exactly like is what dick you want. sucking lips, yeah. but different, <laughs> but with a duck. Quack yeah. quack. <laughs> yeah, really big lips. All right, we got off topic. Again. Big huge cheeks. Yeah, and We're then back when, to and, sex. and then so yeah. much, yeah. so much know, Botox that when you smile, it's just it's like nothing. Yeah, no, you don't want that. Yeah, <laughs> I see some of the bodybuilders will like get calf implants and oh like yeah, ass implants oh yeah, they do implants like that. That's like crazy, tri- are yeah. like triceps that do all kinds of weird mm. shit. I will be honest. I do uh, on social media when I come across a lot. I mean, fuck, fitness influencers, dime a dozen, dime a dozen. Uh, I do, tr- I will watch some of the videos 
to kind of see if I can tell if their butt's fake. Hmm. I don't think I could. I don't think I would be able to tell. I think it'd be like one of those haters that's like, oh, it looks really good. Oh, fake. What are they doing there? Do they put an implant in? Yeah, and there's different ways because now they, they do implants. Oh, some but of them now they, they also inject shit. In yeah. There. So huh. some people, they actually do a called Sculptra, and it's a it's better for you. It's an implant that it actually gets your body to produce its own. Well, no, it's not an implant. It's a filler. Sorry, it's a filler. Yeah. And it goes into the area, and they inject it in all the areas, and it makes your, your body will produce its own, like, collagen, and it, like, Interesting. will fill up. But it only lasts for a couple of years. Or, I mean, or longer depends on the person. Why not just get juiced up and squat heavier? <laughs> I've also, the, okay. <laughs> right? I mean, like, you want to get gonna, a bigger ass. Why not just, just I am going to tell, <laughs> tell this. This is a secret. Oh. Sort of. Oh. Breaking news. No, you can't do that. It's kind of a secret. Oh, okay. I'm going to do a kind of secret. I know what you're going to say. There was just a time where you wanted, I'm not going to say which doctor, but a doctor. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was asking cause I've had, I mean, I had my boobs redone. It's the only thing I've had done. And I just asked about butts and like all the different thing girls, girls do for butts. And he's really great. Very honest, this doctor. And he also like, you know, on the aside from like our appointment was just saying, or, you know, showed me a woman that he knows her butt is in, was incredible. And she's like a fitness person. And I was like, okay, how did you get it like that? Like either what exercise did you do? Did you like, get to give it a squeeze? No. Cause it was a picture in my mind. I suppose uh, Jane, it. Can you come by the in office? Someone needs a cup of feel <laughs> on that ass. In my oh, mind, yeah. I suppose it. But basically what I found out was, how she built this beautiful real butt is because she was doing it. She was doing steroids and then just uh, really focusing on just doing exercises just to build her butt. Yeah. Because go. my big, and I was like, well, yeah, eh, no, nah. not for me. No, not for Cause like what I always said is like, I see these girls that have these, they have the, even in fitness outside of CrossFit, uh, everyone has the same body. Mm -hmm. It's becoming the body. Mm -hmm. They have the small waist, big butt, and that round thing pretty in little your face, you get sprung. sprung. <laughs> Want to pull up the truck when you notice that butt was stuck. Oh, uh, something. Go up and drive the Honda. <laughs> Make it taste my Fonda. Fonda ain't got a. I was like, back of that Honda. Honda. My, my anaconda, anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hun. You can do that benzo sit up, but please don't lose that butt. <laughs> I was like waiting until I actually knew the words. I was like, this was like. One, two, Skip three, to the chorus. four, one, two, three. <laughs> but I, my, my comment was always like, you can't have, and this is an assumption, but my assumption was you can't have a butt like that and have no hamstring mm -hmm. and no quad. Right. Like, I, and, and to me, it's like, you know, I don't have a really big butt. I have huge hamstrings. And it's like, maybe if my hamstrings are a little bit smaller, my butt, butt to hamstring ratio would look more like some of these girls. And well, so when I I'm found glad out you're so saying that because that's well, why I keep my legs skinny so it makes my cock look that much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, oh, you need to work your legs more. I'm Baby. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I like I the that? ratios. Why I like the I proportions. There. Same thing. I'm like, my vagina is huge. <laughs> I get my legs really big. Yeah, so my yeah. vagina looks so oh, small. My legs really skinny. So my vagina looks ginormous. <laughs> Anyone can oh, hit a huge labia. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, uh. and so when I found that out, I was like, honestly, thank you. Like, at least I just, I now know what a lot of people, right. like, that's what the girls are willing to do. And it comes down to like, what are you willing to do? Right. How it bad, how bad do you true. want it? And I'm like, you know, not that bad. Not that bad. <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> because I saw your face and I don't want that. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. They get the steroids, acromegaly. okay? Yeah. Or it's like, yeah, it's like, right. you, like, like the back zits or, yeah. Really, it's like back, you, yeah. you start to see it in like their the right. jaw. Facial dysmorph, dis, uh, what are they called? Dysmorphia? No, that's no. like when you look in the mirror and you oh, see yeah, something no, different I mean, uh, than what you think. It's called, I, I have think it's facial dysmorphia. Acromegaly. Acromegaly? I'm spit out of the game so long, I can't even tell you wrong here. I used to know what that was called. Yeah, it's, it's basically where your, your growth plates start realigning. So when you see that like... Like very like, like manly a cro features. Cro magna man. Like they start looking like the Whoa. back in the evolutionary. Well, it's kind of how, it's how you just said that. Can I just tell you? I'm sorry. We all we almost have to like end this. Yeah, because I need another drink. I know. I'm sorry, but can I just tell you right now? Yes. I was just we were talking about 23 and Me earlier. Uh -huh. There is a part in there where it tells you like, did you look at your Neanderthal? Dude, I am Neanderthal. I am mm. Neanderthal. Do you know what it told me? Mm. I am 
more Neanderthal than 57%. That's like me. Where's my phone? 57% of all like 23andMe no, customers. I'm, and I'm a really high percent of Neanderthal. Well, and then in my just my my DNA group, which is like, I think there's like 357, it says, you're the winner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most Neanderthal of everyone in 357. So when you say crow magnet, I was like, oh my God, do I have like a giant forehead and a giant <laughs> lip? And like, 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 what does that mean? And Let you me- know what it meant? It meant I had, I was more likely to have straight hair, not sneeze after eating chocolate, huh. had to have height. Wow. And then there was a, a fourth one, but I can't remember what the name was what or what or what the trait was. Yeah, I was, but it was so I was funny to Neanderthal. Me. And, I want to see was, which one of us are more Neanderthal. I, I've had my phone. We'll check after I this. Know, okay. and we'll tell you guys we'll next check. time. Yeah, so but I, all, all but right. I also found out on my 23andMe that I was very highly. Um, oh, what is that group called? Haplo group. Through my Haplo group, yeah. I am de- a descendant from. Oh God, who are the guys that like? Uh, the Vikings? Vikings. Yes, Vikings. My oh, I can Viking. see that. Yeah. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you were saying you were English Irish. English Irish. I'm so. actually related to King uh, Louis the Fourteenth. I think is it's really? got like a picture of the king. Like, oh yeah, here's how you're related. So that's oh, kind of cool. Damn. Really? You know what the scariest thing about 23andMe is? See, you, you never have to experience this because you're you're females. Every week it sends me an email and it says, ding, 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 you have new DNA relatives. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. As a no, man, same thing. it's the scariest oh. fucking thing ever. <laughs> I'm like, oh god! Because you're like, you're like, oh Dude, shit! I do do I have some other I op- kids out I there? I open it up, and like every time my heart starts racing, <laughs> I start sweating a little bit. I'm just waiting. I'll be on like Sally, Jesse, Raphael. I'm like, daddy! I'm like, oh, oh my god! So what's so funny is I was just talking to somebody about this. So this happened to somebody I know. Well, through the grapevine, no, and he actually bought kits for his kids. They all did it, and then. It started because it'll tell you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and they say it gets, it gets even better if the more people in your family right, do they it. Right, they get more information. Right. But he gave it to his kids. All of his kids did it, and since they're like he did it, and his kids did it, there were some other people that became also fifty percent related to them, which means that they share a parent. Mm. So he found out that he had parented other children with someone else besides the kids that he gave the kits to mother. Right. Oy. And it was like, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. So, so yeah, so I understand that. Yes. Yes. Dr- I obviously familial <laughs> drama. <laughs> right. Yeah. 23 and me. Right. Crazy. Stay away. Yeah. No. Right, yeah, right after, right after, right after, right after I did it, people were, you know, talking about, I mean, probably like Bill Burr, which I love comedian talking about like 23 and me and why not to do it. It's like, you're just giving your DNA <laughs> to the government. And I was like, Oh, Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> it's done. I'm going to do I'm it anyway. Viking, so I'm going to do it yeah. anyway. I'll do it anyway. Yeah, I'm anyway. very Swiss, both my parents. And and then in Switzerland, like Swiss German, uh, you've got, you know, French, Italy, Germany, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm very Swiss German, um, Irish German, and English. Irish German, English. You're also very white. I'm very white. <laughs> but I'm a Viking, so I am. So you're um, cooler than me? Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> They're badass. Right, the thank Vikings. you. Thank you. You know, they went into places and just like killed all the ugly people. I remember remember what Annie told me that one time. The Vikings actually being in Iceland, you can go through the whole history and like the original Vikings and to like survive on Iceland. Have you guys been there? No. No. Oh my God. You'd have to be a tough SOB. Oh yeah. No. Imagine Hawaii. Right. With no trees and no vegetation. Okay. And freezing cold all the time. Right now with my No wonder they're fucking sounds amazing. Badass. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, it's the yeah. best place. I was like, uh, I'm brown. Like, we don't do good in that environment. Like, I need a warm beach and warm water and dolphins. And I want like, like a pool and yeah. a cocktail. Yeah. Trying to show off That's this 13%. Not, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah my 13% not, comes yeah. knocking quick. Yeah. Like, get me the fuck out of here. It just dominated all There's the There's only one the reason we showed up on this island and it wasn't to be. Uh, yeah, anyways. Yeah, no. I get it. All right. Well, (laughs) all right. We covered a lot. Yeah. We did. We'll come back just real quick. Um, You're coming back? But just for the end. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were like cutting to a commercial and coming back. No. Oh, wow, man. We got a long (laughs) way to go. We do have commercials. We're going to record after this. I think Um, this drink just kicked in. Yeah. All right. 
you've been through a lot. You yeah. had your chiropractic office. You started from the bottom. Now you're here. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're a rising star. That was my rising <laughs> star. Um, what is maybe <laughs> some? Yeah. What's maybe some advice that you could give to not only us but our listeners, um, like business advice? <clears throat> I know that's like a very broad question and I have a really hard time with people when people well, ask me questions can, like that, but maybe just very specific for people that are starting something new that, yeah. you know, they would love to own a business. Yeah. Um, surround yourself with good people, you know, check your ego at the door. So don't be afraid to bring on people that are smarter than you and are more, more talented than you. It's necessary to, to grow. Um, choose a single target market. You know, too many people try to go too big too soon or too broad too soon. Choose a single target market, whether that's a specific specific niche or that's a specific geography. But, you know, make it work with one person or one store or one whatever and then 10 before you try to make it work for a million. You know, um, those are probably the two biggest things when you're when you're first starting out. Great advice. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming over. Hey, you're fun, man. Me. Yeah. You're super fun. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. I knew yeah. that. You didn't know that? I mean, I already knew it, but I'm just saying, like, it, this has been, like, super fun. Oh, it's, like, also, one of my favorite um, podcasts so far. When is, I know that your last um, little get-together that you threw, I was going to come and I was out of town. When's the next one? It's always first weekend in October. We have, uh, this year we had 24 DJs, about 100, 105 people. Wow. Um, went for three days. We officially start Friday, but it kind of started Thursday. We officially end Sunday, but it didn't end until Tuesday. <laughs> so I scheduled some buffer days. But no, incredible music, some of those talented DJs uh, all around. We had two people from, two DJs from Hawaii come out, um, you know, DJs from the East Coast. It was, it was epic. We had How a light fun. show. It was fucking, it was, it was probably the best, it was the best year. Wow. Was, Can you make next year the best year? Cause I will come next year. So we keep doing, keep Perfect. up leveling. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank up you and for up. coming and, and chatting with us and dealing with our very off the cusp. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> our obnoxious, <laughs> our obnoxious, our obnoxious, uh, I don't know, selves. Yes. And, Hopefully we can chat soon. All right. And you, I did actually want to ask one more question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you launched the CBD product, you yep. said you're sold out. Yep. What was, how fast did you guys sell out? Two days. Wow. Yeah, how, many, how many, how uh, many? We did $170,000 in two days, I think. Wow. So we sold out of our entire production run. So uh, anyone out there, hopefully by the time you're listening to this, we've gotten you your order, but things are taking, <laughs> it's going we're to literally show producing it, it as fast point. as we can right now. Yeah. So forgive us. It's taken a little longer uh, than we typically take to get the product out. Well, who knew? Who knew it would be such a hit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For uh-huh. anyone that I feel like everyone here should know what Fiddy is, um, but anyone who doesn't, or maybe they do, but they are not sure where to find you guys. Yep. Uh, you can always go to our website, lifeaidaidbevco.com. Check us out at FitAid on Instagram. Or if you want to reach out to me, at Aaron, A-A-Ron, Hind. Yeah, that's right. H-I-N-D-E. H-I-N-D-E. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank Not you. Not Hindi right. or Hind. You guys, remember to rate, rate review, review, subscribe, five-star rating, five-star warning. And we'll talk to you, we'll next talk week. you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Well-coordinated.